I'm pleased to say that we're joined by Avanish Hegde from cricket.com, anchor, broadcaster, host. To look ahead to the second test match, we've spoken a lot about the first. Uh, but what of the second? Because we're expecting a different type of surface. Um, so possibly India going to go with three spinners. Uh, we shall see. But Avanish, uh, what do you expect from this test? Um, and uh, do you see this as, you know, India moving away from Bangladesh in the way that they did on days three to four? But, or do you think it might be another quite uh, competitive test match? Historically, I think it should be competitive. The last two affairs in Kanpur have gone all five days. The last time we played there was, what, 2021? I think Shreya Sai scored 100. There was no Virat, there was no Rohit, there was no Bumrah, there was no Pant. So, obviously, that uh, test match suggested that they went for three spinners, Ashwin, Jadeja and Akshar. And I think the colour of the surface also will change from the red soil that we saw in Shepok to the black soil that we're going to see in Kanpur. So, let's see how that really pans up because... I spoke about the 2021 test, but the 2016 test against New Zealand as well was a pretty good one. I think India won that one, but the 21 test was a drawn affair. Thanks pretty much to New Zealand playing out of their skin, John. What do you think about, um, you know, we heard some talk about Ashwin playing his last test at Sheffield, perhaps, and he kind of made reference to it as well. It feels like to me he's very much... He's got a mind of, I really want to play in Australia. I really want to play in England, you know, World Test Championship or beyond, you know, let's see how he goes. But it feels like at the moment, Ashwin might be thinking about retirement, but also playing as many games as he can before he makes that decision. Yeah, absolutely. I think with Ashwin loving Test cricket so much, I think he's always going to put that in terms of the forefront of his career. And even though he's in the twilight of his career, I think he's just a scientist. And I know that's a word overused for Ashwin, but... Make no mistake, the man loves the game so much. India can space it out. I don't think India will not rest Ashwin. I think he's key to our success. And whether it was his last game in Chepok, only time will tell. I think because he's such a great, they could really, knowing the BCCI, make a special Chennai test in the years down to <laughs> two, two years' time or something like that. So you can't really rule it out. I was actually speaking to some of the fans outside Chepok and I asked them this very question, Jared, and they were adamant that he's going to be playing one more test minimum and this is surely not at last. But if it was, what a way to bow out 100 and a five for. Do you think he um, was making a statement, with, especially with his batting? I, I know I'm not saying he, he only made runs because of Australia, but do you think there was maybe there'd been a little bit of talk about Cool Deep being the second spinner in Australia and everything? And he was like, I, I need to remind you all I could still bat. Absolutely. I think it's a very underrated skill that when we talk about Ashwin, the test cricketer, not many people look at his batting. And I know he's got four against the West Indies, one against England, the least, I mean, the latest one being against Bangladesh. But I genuinely feel he grew up as a batter. I think there is a certain ego element in terms of Ashwin himself thinking of him as a batter. So the credentials of the bat, I didn't think this 100 had to kind of prove that, but it just gives the selectors and the team something to think about. Because the last time as well, he had to play because he was forced in. But how many times have we seen it in a way test that Ashwin has dropped on his batting game more than the pitch being a rank turner or not? So I hope he does play all the five games in the BGT because, again, his mind games is what I love as an Indian cricket fan. Uh, what about Rashad Pant? Do you think that there's ever any chance that he could even surpass MS Dhoni in their in India's affection for a for a wicketkeeper batter like uh, like those two? You wouldn't believe it, John, because I was actually again talking to some of the fans outside Chennai, and they absolutely love MS Dhoni, right? Because he's a demigod there, if not anything else. And with Rishabh Pant doing what he's doing in the longest format of the game, all the Dhoni fans, even the ardent ones, were happy to say that you know what. <laughs> Pant is just supremely better than Dhoni in tests. And I think it's fair to say that because what he's given us in the short career and MS Dhoni, white ball legend. But in the test scheme of things, every true Indian cricket fan understands that Dhoni did have his pros and cons as a test match cricketer, be it as a captain or as a batter. So hands down, hand in my heart as well. I think Rishabh Pant is supremely better and is potentially the best ever test keeper that we produce, barring Farooq Engineer and, and the great Dinesh Karthik and so on and so forth. Yeah, but I mean, he's already kind of made a play for all those guys, hasn't he? Like, in terms of average. And Dhoni, for, Dhoni's a legend in so many ways, but test batting is probably the one thing where everyone went, he kind of should have done better and it never quite worked. Um, how much, though, is it now in India that you need to be all format? Like, I know Ashwin's not particularly an all format great in, in the same way, but 
it, it does feel now like there's a real push towards you, you know, Boomerer and Rohit and Virat being all format. Does Rishabh Pant have to step up in T20 cricket and ODI cricket as well to sort of, because the Dhoni level is quite high, right? It is. It is a huge, huge sort of shoes to fill. And I feel with Pant, he's got, Ample amount of chances in the T20 setup. Coming back, of course, after that horrendous accident and then winning the World Cup served him well. But if you looked at his numbers, many fans were arguing why didn't Samson stand a chance? Then the left-handed sort of tax comes into with Rishabh Pant, even though there's someone like Ishan Kishan in the mix. I generally feel Rishabh Pant is a three-format player, but fans have kind of had enough of him in the white ball scheme of things. Sure, there's always a second chance in life and mm. Pant can probably come back in the next 18 months and fight for his position for the 2026 World Cup or the 2027 World Cup. But I genuinely see this format being the best best for Pant. And, and, and the proof's in the pudding, Jared and John. Mm, I mean, so he's done it in Africa, he's done it in Australia, he's done it in England. So what more can you expect from uh, a, a Delhi boy, should I say? Uh, just before you go, uh, Avinash, there was um, there's a story this week in England where essentially the Lancashire uh, chief exec has come out and said that the ECB need to follow the BCCI's lead. Um, you were talking about Shreya Sire earlier on. Uh, go back to the start of the year, and there was some criticism about the fact, I think it was Shreya Sire, uh, maybe Ishan Kishan, they didn't play uh, domestic Red Bull cricket, and was it Gautam Gambier? But essentially, the BCCI came out and said, look, everybody's got to play Red Bull cricket domestically. Cannot uh, avoid playing you know, uh, Red Bull cricket if you want to play test cricket. Uh, for India. Um, do you think that's something that has worked? I mean, Shreya Sai, as you said, he's, he scored runs the last time uh, India played at uh, at Kampur. I mean, as a as a mentality and approach, do you think that is one that actually the ECB should follow and essentially enforce that in this country as well? Yeah, it's a tough one to answer, but what I would say is when Jay Shah kind of made that clear in his stance, uh, yeah, sending yeah. players like Shan Kishan and Shreya Sai back into the domestic scheme of things, he was kind of setting a precedent going forward, saying that it shouldn't just be all about the IPL hullabaloo, it should be generally kind of giving more importance to the domestic circuit, in this case the Ranji. And it's done wonders for some of the players to even participate in the latest Dulip Trophy, right? So we mm. saw your trademark white ball bowlers such as Yashtayal and Arshdeep Singh, who are normally... If affiliated with the IPL and household names through that, they've, of course, kind of made their mark and pushing for a place in the test squad because India obviously have a plethora of pacers, John. And when you kind of add in the versatility of a Yashtayal or Rashdeep Singh, it does give you that sort of cushion. But coming back to the Shreyas Iyer bit, I feel there's various chances for cricketers these days to go and apply their trade in the country. We've seen that Ajinka Rahani. I think he's doing that beautifully at Leicester. We've seen that with other Indian cricketers in the past. I think Shreyas probably needs to just go there and spend some time out there because even in the current Tulip Trophy, it's not going well for him. So the question mm. is, when can he come back in the scheme of things? And we're talking about the IPL captain here, right? So that just goes to show the depth that this beautiful country has. And it's a conveyor belt because we were talking to a Bangladesh journalist in terms of their domestic cricket structure. And it's about eight teams to choose from, whereas India have about 25, 30 in there itself, you have about 120 middle-order batters to choose from. So, it's crazy, but players like Shreya Sai, if I was him, dare I say, I would probably go to the county. I know it's easier said than done, but just to bide your time as a cricketer, because he still has miles in his legs and age in his side. So, there's definitely going to be a second coming, is my humble opinion. I, I think the interesting thing going forward is that players like Shreya Sai are, and we saw this with Nicholas Puran and so many other players, they don't play a lot of cricket. And so Baba Azam, I think a lot of Baba Azam's recent problems outside of the small technical things are literally just that he hasn't played enough balls to get himself back into form. And the West Indians were the first ones who told me that. They were just like, the problem with T20 is you go through a tournament or two where you don't make any runs just naturally, right? Like you just don't make any runs in that tournament. And then suddenly you don't do anything. So even if you want to be a really good IPL player in India, you're probably better off playing, you know, some Ranger games, some list A games and everything else going over, as you said, playing some county cricket or whatever that may be. Um, and I think that players will start to think about that a little bit more just because T20 cricket can be, oh, I played two tournaments here and I faced 84 balls. Um, <laughs> and now I've got six months off, right? Like, what do I do for the next six months? So I do think, you know, there is a... Th there is an element of just facing as many balls as you can seems to be quite important going ahead. So I, I, I don't mind that at all.
Yeah, I think it's a volume of cricket when we talk about it and we kind of sympathise with cricketers nowadays in terms of how much cricket they're playing. But then when you break it down, absolutely spot on, Jared. The fact that you can look at it in the cold light of day as a batter and be like, hold on, I didn't actually play that much because mm. cricket's a funny game. You might enter a competition which has 14 games, but if you get a couple of first ballers and low scores, then you need to really think of, okay, fine, apart from the nets, I really need to be match ready and match practice and oil those shoulders. So, Onwards and upwards, I guess, for every cricket out there. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.